Today, I am really pleased to be welcoming Kristen Boss and Beth Barber from Insperity. Insperity, as I mentioned before, is one of our community partners for CEO Next Business Institute. And as part of this partnership, and if any of you attended last week's, or I'm sorry, last month's CEO forum, um, our community partners uh, bring us great content um, to our members and um, they bring expert level educational resources from their team and um, Insperity's team works across the nation. So we're so lucky to have them here today um, so they can generously share their um, expertise and knowledge with our CEOs and our community. So um, I'm really pleased to be turning over the presentation to Kristen Boss from Insperity. She is our, a certified business performance advisor and our program rep for CEO Next. So thank you so much for joining us today, Kristen, and I, um, I turn it over to you. Awesome, thanks for that introduction, Mary. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the CEO uh, Forum today, we're super proud to be community par partners of CEO Next and, and pleased to provide you information to help your businesses grow on the forum today. So as Mary said, I'm a business performance advisor with Insperity. That means that I work with business owners, C-level executives, leadership, um, that are interested in putting in place an HR strategy to grow and support and scale their business. Um, our subject matter expert from Insperity today is Beth Barber. She is out of our Fort Worth office and she is a human resource specialist. Um, we do operate in all 50 states and have service teams to support all of our clients all across all 50 states. I'm local here in the Twin Cities area. My office is in Bloomington. Beth is coming from um, our Fort Worth area today. Um, and we're excited to share with you some of the trends that we're seeing in the employer-employee um, relationship. Um, I'm sure many of you are well aware that kind of what that employer-employee relationship has been in the past has sometimes been completely turned upside down over the last couple of years. And so we're excited to share um, some trends that are happening and maybe some ways to approach them. So with that, Beth, I'll have you um, take us through the presentation. Thank you, Kristen. Um, Today we'll be talking about top HR trends that are shaping our new normal. We're gonna go through each of the trends, um, talking a little bit about them, what businesses are experiencing, and then some things that y'all will be able to um, do um, in, in regards to either combating the trends or working with them. Um, first, we'll go through the what are businesses experiencing today, for the most part, of course. Um, so first and foremost, and something that I think we're all very well aware of, is COVID. COVID is still very much raw and relevant. It is still affecting the workplace, whether it's employees wanting to continue to work remote or how to safely bring employees back into the office from remote work, but it's also affecting things like work protocols or supply chain issues. And with COVID, um, has actually come the opening of the eyes of businesses that are currently in hiring mode. So what are the implementation, what are the implications when it comes to hiring remote employees? Is your business even able to hire remote employees and other things surrounding the flexibility and work-life balance? A lot of companies are also having to look internally and asking themselves, you know, what's the future of our work? Are we a business or industry that can support this new normal? Or are we a business or industry that we, we can't? And how do we deliver that, that message? And then they're also just experiencing morale um, issues, whether that is issues with employees being burnt out or issues with um, employees being stressed or looking internally and reevaluating what they're wanting out of a workplace or a job. To go over our agenda again, we're gonna go through top four HR trends again, and then we're gonna break it out through what businesses are experiencing, a little bit about how I support businesses, but also how you can be supporting your business as well, um, different types of resources. And then we'll have a recap and then time for question and answers. 
Like Kristen said, um, my name is Beth Barber. I am an HR specialist out of Fort Worth. Um, I have worked with clients that have ranged from having three employees up to 175 employees. So I see the gamut. Um, I've been with Insperity for five years, and I really do try to strive to meet my clients and my um, CDM, the CEOs and uh, key decision makers where they're at and, and strive to find out-of-the-box solutions that fits their needs. The first trend that we'll talk about is attracting top talent in the tight labor market today. Uh, many employers are having difficulty with attracting and hiring the right candidates, especially in the climate today. So what are businesses experiencing? Um, job applicants are seeking a lot of different things and, and new things that they've never sought before. And again, it's a tight labor market. We, we know this. And, and what exactly does that mean? So real basic definition of tight labor market is going to be plenty of demand, not enough workers, right? Um, but this one's a little bit different. Um, this economy is close to full employment and, and recruitment is becoming more and more difficult. Um, there's a lot of pressure on wages. There's a lot of pressure on benefits and not just your traditional benefits that you're seeing, but pressure on what other benefits are you offering? And, and that can look like PTO or working remote or flexible hours um, or providing even equipment for, for remote working. So what exactly are the job applicants thinking? Something we're all familiar with, a lot of job applicants now are asking for that greater work-life balance. Um, so for the past two years, employees have, for the most part, probably been working remote or got the taste of working remote um, and enjoyed it. They liked having that freedom. They, they have enjoyed not sitting um, in traffic commuting to work every day. So one of the biggest factors that we're seeing are applicants asking for that work-life balance for you know, the, the choice to choose their own hours. The second thing that we're seeing, especially in our executive level applicants or our C-suite is strategic planning. So they're coming in and they're wanting to come work for a business um, or a company that has thought about their strategy, has thought about things like, how are you gonna move forward in this new normal? What is your plan for dealing with A, B, and C trends or issues? Um, where do you yourself see the business or company being in five, 10 years? Um, have you changed up what your business model is? Have you changed up even what your industry might be or expanded? Um, they're looking for companies or businesses that are, that are digging deep and, and thinking about that and forward thinking. The other thing they're looking for, job applicants these days, is a company that is socially conscious or very brand aware. Um, the generation that's coming into the workforce right now um, is the most socially conscious generation that we've had. And so they're, they wanna know, what are you doing to help, right? What are you doing out in the community? Um, what are you doing in regards to putting together some sort of philanthropy or community event that all of us go out and participate in? Or do you have volunteer time off? And then the other thing is the branding. What does your brand stand for? You know, branding wasn't a big question from job applicants before um, COVID and the civil unrest that took place. But now it is. Branding is a big question that's being asked by job applicants. What's your brand? You know, what do you stand for? What are your values? And so that we're seeing these three things be brought up more and more when it comes to candidates being interviewed for different positions within the companies. The second trend that we're seeing is retaining top talent in the new normal. So this is retaining your talent that's already there, that's been there for the past year or two or even further back. How can you retain them? How can you keep them happy in the new normal? What are you experiencing as businesses? 
Something we have all, I'm sure, heard of and are in our sick of talking about is the great resignation, right? This is just massive turnover within our American business landscape. We in September saw that the resignation in the US, the resignation rate was 3%. That's just resignation. That doesn't include involuntary separations from companies. This is people actually choosing to resign from the companies that they're working for. Um, and then the other thing that actually comes before the great resignation is the great reevaluation, right? So before these individuals are leaving or resigning from companies, they're taking an internal look at what do I want? as an employee? What do I want out of an employer? What values do I like? What values do I not like? Um, what type of flexibility am I wanting to see or have? What type of benefits am I wanting to have? Um, and ways that you can get an insight into what individuals are thinking about when they're going through the process of this reevaluation, are there multiple surveys that you can run? for your companies. You can run a climate survey to get a lay of the land from your employees. You know, what's going well? Where are opportunities that you can improve on? What are they seeking? What can you give? Um, another one would be an engagement survey. How engaged are your employees actually? Are they, are they just here because it's a job and it's a paycheck that comes to the bank every other week? Or do they really believe in what they're, what they're doing, um, what the job is, what the company is behind? Businesses are also experiencing burnout amongst their top talent. Um, and the burnout started two years ago with COVID, right? Um, yes, we were working from home, but our, our expectations have increased that we want to see from our employees. We're expecting a lot of them, a lot out of them. And that expectation hasn't lessened. Um, the new normal now is working these new long hours, hard hours, stressful situations. And unfortunately, it's not sustainable. So we're seeing a lot of individuals leaving businesses because of burnout. One thing you can offer though, is acknowledgement. Acknowledging to the company, to your employees, that you know that there is stress, that there is burnout, that people are running on fumes. And then you can offer up things like maybe extra PTO days, right, to, for them to take mental health days. If you have an employee assistance program with your benefit provider, that is a wonderful benefit that is actually very underutilized um, across American businesses today. And it's something that is just absolutely wonderful for employees, whether it's counseling sessions that they might need or even help finding, you know, a new daycare for their child and they just don't have the time to do it because, you know, they're at work or they're working hard. So that's something that businesses are experiencing as well. The last is request for flexibility. More and more leaders and supervisors are seeing the request for flexibility from their current employees. This goes back to what I was speaking to before where employees liked working remote. Employees liked being able to wake up early at 5.30, send some emails for 30, 45 minutes from their laptop at home, run off to the gym, get a quick workout in, and then come back and start the day. They liked that flexibility. They liked having ownership over their day, more so than they had probably before COVID. Now, not every industry and not every department or position within your company might be able to be flexible or it might not be able to be a remote position. So one thing to think about is how do you convey that message to those individuals, to that department or whomever without affecting morale? And you want to frame it in a way where it is full of encouragement and appreciation for those individuals or that department. Other things businesses are, are experiencing when it comes to keeping the talent that they have, a lot of it has to do with compensation. So right now, not only is the labor market really tight, but everyone across the board, I mean, 
people are earning more or asking for more money and they're actually getting it when they're looking for jobs. So salaries are very competitive right now. And you can run salary surveys. You can do market research to help give you a better idea of if um, it is your compensation in the range that is competitive amongst your industry. Other things that are being brought to our attention are questions about retention pay um, and remote workers, which I've already touched on. But retention pay, right? That goes that goes to talking about stay bonuses or stay interviews. Um, you can conduct stay interviews to find out pretty much what exactly will it take for you to stay. What's it going to take for you, my high performer, um, someone who I see going going a very long way within this company? What's it going to take for you to stay? What can we offer you? What can we do? Um, and then stay bonuses, um, which are pretty self-explanatory, but just like you would have a sign-on bonus with getting uh, an offer out to an individual, now we're seeing an increase in stay bonuses, offering a bonus mid-year for staying. And you can, you know, even make it um, go beyond that and, and have it be some sort of stay contract. And um, that would be something you'd work with outside counsel on. The third thing they're experiencing is unwritten compensation plans. So because compensation is such a hot topic right now amongst not only um, candidates, but also internal employees within your company, um, documentation of compensation plans has never been more important. Um, you don't want to get into the situation where you have maybe discussed a stay bonus with an individual or um, made it sound like stay bonuses were coming for your employees and they took that as okay I'm getting a stay bonus of this amount and then you're not able to deliver whether it's financial reasons or um, you have to reevaluate but then you've got a you know he said she said type of situation and there's nothing written there's no proof and to make you know, your life easier as CEOs, as C-suite level individuals, you're going to wait to make sure that your compensation plans are all written out, whether it's stay bonuses that talk about what they're getting, maybe even the breakout of how you decided how much they'll be getting, and then also when it's paid. But then also, if you have sale, um, salespeople within your organization, you want to make sure that their compensation plan is written out as well, because I know salespeople's compensation plans are ever-changing in today's environment, too. The last thing businesses are experiencing um, that a lot of employees are more and more aware of are there are new pay guidelines coming out. And I'll touch on this a little bit later in, in another trend, um, but this goes to pay equity laws. That's what this is talking about. There are new pay equity laws coming out. Um, are you up to date? Um, your individuals are able to Google pay guidelines just, just like you are. Um, you know, everything's at our fingertips now on the internet. Um, so you want to make sure that you're staying up to date with all of that within your state or region. <clears throat> Trend three is compliance and regulation complexities. So ever-changing legal environment. One of the things I'm sure y'all heard about recently was when the administration came out with their vaccine mandate, right? It went all the way through um, Supreme Court, but there was back and forth before the Supreme Court came down with their final say. Um, and that's something that's, that was ever-changing from day to day. Well, same with CDC guidelines, right? The CDC can change what they are gonna recommend when it comes to COVID and being safe in the work environment at any point. And this is something that businesses are having a hard time keeping up with, um, is what exactly is the CDC saying? You know, how do I have my employees feel that they're being safe um, and healthy within the workplace? The next is the pay equity legislation. Again, this is something that's ever changing as well because more and more states are adopting pay equity laws. And each state has different rules and regulations built into those laws that you would have to follow. The last is paid family and sick leave. Um, 
Sick leave has been around for a while, the mandatory sick leave. Different states have started to adopt the sick leave. Now different states are either adding or adopting some sort of paid family leave or lumping the two into one policy like a paid family and sick leave or a, or a health and welfare leave. And the big thing with, with this type of legislation that we're seeing is it's not just statewide, right? So yes, California has a paid sick leave, but so does LA, so does Sacramento, so does San Diego, right? Same with Washington. You've got a Washington state sick leave, but then you've got Tacoma and Seattle that have their own very different sick leave. And so how are businesses supposed to figure that out, right? How are they supposed to stay on top of being compliant. Um, and the other thing with these leaves are most of them, it doesn't matter how many employees are in a location. So I know most of y'all are, are based in, in Minnesota around the St. Paul area, but if you have a remote worker that's working in LA, you know, yes, it's one person, but they have to be offered a sick leave. Um, so these are things that um, is taking time within businesses to keep up to date with. So how can, how can you support with all these complexities, all these challenges when it comes to compliance? So making sure that you're staying up to date with any legislation, making sure that you're staying up to date with any policy recommendations. If you have a HR director or HR specialist within your organization, um, I recommend that they they be in charge of this. Um, there, there are places that they can subscribe to where they can get alerts on any type of legislation updates. Um, there are places they can subscribe to to help them build a policy that would be compliant um, for any type of mandates coming through. Same with COVID guidance and COVID resources. Do you as a business, do you have something in writing or something consistent that you can follow when it comes to COVID? If an employee were to get COVID, are you following the same steps for another employee who might get COVID? And then what are your resources? Do you have resources that you are able to look into or tap into or that those employees who might have COVID questions that they're able to look into or tap into? Another way to support is compliance recommendations for pay equity laws. This goes hand in hand, in my opinion, with the updates and policy recommendations around the sick leave or the family leave laws, is do you have someone within your organization who can alert you on these pay equity laws? Is it your payroll director? Um, is it your accountant? Is it your HR director? But someone who is in charge of keeping up to date with these things so that you don't fall behind and now you're rushing to get mandatory policies in place and so that you don't get fined because all of these new legislations and these new laws do come with some sort of fine. And again, it's different for every place. The last trend that we'll discuss that we're seeing a lot of and have seen a lot of over the past few years is DE&I. So what are you as a business experiencing or what are we seeing businesses experiencing? We're seeing a lot of realization that DE&I is and needs to be an integral part um, to the business strategy. So this goes back to a little bit about what job applicants are seeking. Um, part of that strategy they wanna see is, do you have some sort of DE&I strategy in place? Is that at the forefront of your mind? Also the need for full spectrum DE&I support. Do you have a DEI specialist within your organization, or have you consulted with a third party vendor who offers DEI support and can help you put in place some sort of program? And then lastly, you know, DEI can be a sticky conversation to have, it can make some people uncomfortable, but are you a C suite level individual? You know, do you have a safe sounding board to ask questions? Because asking questions is important in all aspects of running a business. Um, and we're seeing that, that some businesses um, asking questions surrounding DE&I make them a little bit nervous. Um, so if you are going to 
work with a third party vendor or a DEI consultant, do you feel safe going to them and asking them any question that you might have surrounding this program? So just to recap a little bit about the trends that we're seeing, um, again, attracting top talent in a tight labor market, some issues surrounding that, and, and what are some things that you can do? You can take an internal look um, at your onboarding process, at your benefit offerings. Trend number two, how do you retain the top talent in the new normal? There are surveys that you can run to get the take from your employees. There are um, different things that you can do to reach out to employees that are going through some sort of mental issues or burnout. Trend number three, compliance and regulation complexities. Do you have someone within your organization or, or someone that you've partnered with that can stay up to date with the just ever-changing legal world of employment law? And then trend number four, the DE&I updates. Again, do you have someone you can lean on um, to make sure that this is a part of your business strategy. And then a little bit about how I myself and Insperity um, support my clients and businesses that I partner with. Um, I do offer support around flexible and remote work schedules. I help my clients build those policies so that it fits their company culture and their company needs and then help them implement that. Um, I also do a lot of work with handbooks and job descriptions. So making sure handbooks are up to date and that goes along with compliance as well. Um, I'm in charge of making sure that they are compliant in all aspects of legislation surrounding employment law. I evaluate job descriptions um, and that is a really important one because the job descriptions then help with our projects that have to do with career pathing, compensation surveys or compensation planning as well. Um, and then I'm, you know, the safe sounding board for that DEI for any questions you might have. Am um, I help implement that program or run that training for my clients? So I know we have talked about a lot. We have gone through a lot, um, a little bit fast and furious, um, but I would really like to open this up um, for any questions that you might have, um, or if you've you know, seen any of these struggles yourself, um, any ideas that you've implemented, or if you've had, I'd love to open this up for a conversation. Right, thank you, Beth. If you could, uh maybe advance to the next screen, then we'll go to uh, bringing everyone back and uh, encourage them to unmute and to uh, uh, bring their video up and go into Q&A. Sure. Um, I guess the top of mind, an issue that comes to mind for me is, is you know, the, the labor employment side of, of our, our, our business is typically the largest line item. And it's been the most uh, disrupted in the last two years. And in a theme that you are getting at from different vantage points is, you know, how do we be more proactive? How do we make sure that we're, we're, the compliance side is protected, but we're more proactive uh, given all the threats and pressures? Uh, you know, the, the thought is, you know, what are you seeing in terms of what businesses are doing to take to heart what you've said and then be more proactive because this great reevaluation is is uh, confronting us all. We're, we all have it, whether we understand it fully or not. What are people doing in your mind that that help in, uh, preempt that that risk? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of surveys getting done, to be honest, um, and then focus groups. I'm seeing also a lot of focus groups taking place within organizations, um, and the most successful businesses I'm seeing when it comes to being proactive are the ones that are not only running these surveys or running these focus groups, but once the data has been collected, there are actual action items that they are following through on. So one of the worst things that you can do is, you, is to announce that you're doing this survey, announce that you wanna hear from your employees, hear what they're thinking, hear what they're going through, you know, where are the strengths, where are the opportunities, and, and you give them this voice, but then you don't do anything with their voice. You don't, you don't do anything with what they've been telling you. That is one of the quickest and most surefire ways to just have morale plummet within your organization. Um, 
So I think if you're going to proactively ask employees what they're looking for um, within a job, what, you know, the top three things that they would want um, in, a, in a position or in a business or the most important things that they want to see come across from a company, um, you have to follow through with that, right? Um, now, as far as employment law and legislation, there are countless um agencies that you can subscribe to that will send you all the alerts that you want. Um, most of them can't, you, you're not able to like plug in the states that you're in. Um, they're just going to send you any and all new employment legislation that's coming out. Um, and then you would be able, um, from that alert, um, they'll tell you what you know, like, oh, it has to be in place by January 1. Um, and, and so then you would have some time to work through if there's a policy you need to implement or if there's a poster you need to, you know, put up. Um, and you can work with the HR department on that. Well, given our concentration in the Twin Cities in, in Minnesota, are there any that come to mind here uh, that would we should we may have missed or we, that are coming or sort of, sort of with that focus? And I, this could be both Kristen and Beth, that, that what are the things you're seeing around the corner that we should be ready for? Well, St. Paul already has um, a paid sick leave. St. Paul had that implemented probably four years ago. Um, I, did a, I did a lot of work on that. Um, most of my clients are in this DFW area, so Kristen might have a better idea. Um, I do not hear a lot about Minnesota though. Um, not like California, Illinois, New York, or any of those places. Um, so I don't foresee a lot coming down the pipeline um, for y'all, but again, you just never know because cities can decide to do their own thing. Counties can decide to do their own thing. I, you know, I had to do a lot of work with, um, with some Chicago clients because Chicago, the city, came out with their own sick leave and then Cook County came out with their own sick leave. Well, Chicago sits in Cook County, right? So then you have to really work and, and determine, well, which one do you follow? Which legislation? Um, so just having your ear to the ground, whether you subscribe to um, like a local state agency that can, can help alert you on those things or um, SHRM sometimes is a good resource for that as well. But Kristen, I, I'm not sure if you're hearing anything different for up there. No, I know that um, Minneapolis um, also has, you know, a paid mm -hmm. sick leave as well. So, so, and I'm not a, I'm the front line <laughs> with the <laughs> HR services. So I'm the advisor on working with bringing on clients on the front end of it. So um, I wouldn't want to like speculate. So, but I can um, do a little digging and find out. 